Hi, my name's Nick Raines from Leica Academy Australia. In this video, I want to show you just how easy it is to tether a Leica SL2 to the latest version of Capture One Pro, which is version 21. And in this video, I want to talk to you about how to tether your camera to a laptop particularly when you're shooting in a studio environment like this, but it could be if you're shooting outdoors as well, but you actually want to be able to control the camera from the laptop and see through the camera on your laptop screen. There's a certain advantage of doing that. But let me just introduce you to my little studio for a few minutes. I'm just gonna show you around here. Um, nothing too elaborate. Um, a lot of studios are very, very, basic affairs, you don't see all of the little bits and pieces that are outside the frame. In this particular case, I'm just photographing a small antique camera, but there's a lots of bits of pieces lying around which you're never gonna see, so they don't have to be particularly fancy. For instance, the base here is simply a piece of white perspex, and that gives a little reflection underneath the subject, and you'll see that in the final picture. I've got a reflector card here, which is just a piece of white cardboard, and a laboratory retort stand, if you can see that okay. It's for holding test tubes and things, but you can get them from scientific suppliers for a few dollars. They're very efficient and, and very good value. The background is just a piece of flute core from a hardware store, just nice and clean. And it's just resting at the back, it's not even fixed on, so don't sneeze. And then on this side, this is my light source for this shot. It's just an SF60 flash, which syncs nicely with the SL2 camera and a folding softbox, which is about so big, I think it's a 24 inch one. And that gives me enough power at this distance to give me good apertures. Now I'm shooting it um, at a much wider aperture for the purposes of this demonstration, because uh, it recycles quicker. But if I put this on full power, I can get F16 here without any trouble at all, which is, you know, gives me good depth of field. The camera itself is an SL2. Um, I'm using a 90 millimeter lens. And on the top is the SFC1 remote control, which is wirelessly controlling the flash over there. And I can change the power settings on top if I want to, which is really handy. Okay, so let's have a look at this setup here. The way tethering works, of course, is you have some sort of cable uh, attached to the laptop. And in this particular case, I've got a tether tools USB-C cable, which is the orange one. And they do come in black, but I prefer the orange one because it's much, much easier to see if it's dark. And a lot of times in a studio, you might be shooting in reduced lighting. So having something that's easy to see means you're not gonna trip over it, which is very useful. You simply plug this in, but let me just launch Capture One Pro first. And you'll see, if I bring that up, there we are. So I've got Capture One Pro running and I've started a new session called tethering, just for the purposes of this demonstration. And as soon as I plug this cable into one of these USB-C ports on the side here, you should see camera come to life on the left-hand side of the screen over here. And that's showing me Leica SL2, Apo Summicron 90 millimeter aspheric. It's on manual exposure, which is probably a good idea for studio work. 125th of a second shooting at f4. Now I've already set my exposure. This is not a studio photography demonstration. This is purely about tethering. So I know that that actually works. It's connected. There's no images selected because I haven't shot any yet. All I actually have to do is press this big button on the left-hand side. But focusing would be useful, wouldn't it? Now, as of this version that's just come out, as of the date of this video, this is Capture One 21 I'm using, but this particular release, the dot point release, uh, you can turn on Live View, which is this little video camera symbol on the left-hand side. And that accesses the video feed that the camera is always doing, because you can see it on the back, that's a video feed. It will take this image and it will show it on this screen. So you just click that and you get a very similar screen to the one behind it with all the same controls on the left-hand side, but you can now see an image of the subject. Now it's only the same resolution as the video feed out of the camera, so it's not super high resolution, but it's more than adequate for the task. And it shows me here that I've got the, the, um, the shot framed where I want it, but I want to check focus. Now, focusing from the laptop is something which will be coming in future releases of Capture One Pro. 
Right now we've just got the live view, but on the left hand side you will see camera focus. It's already there, it's just not been implemented as of this video date right now. Um, I'm told that this will be coming and this means that we can focus it, but I'll show you a little workaround in a sec so how we can actually access the focusing without using this. For focusing right now, if the camera is in manual mode, which I would recommend, it's um, much easier when you've got time to focus carefully manually. As soon as I move the focusing ring on the camera with the camera in manual focusing mode, it will magnify the video feed and you'll just see, and as I turn that ring, you should see it going slowly out of focus and slowly back into focus and about there, I would judge that correct to focus on the lens of the antique camera. And then that pops back to full view uh, after a few seconds. That means I've now checked my focus. That means that we're good to go. So all I've got to do now is simply shoot the picture and it will pop up the right hand side over here and I can turn off the live view. So I'm, I'm turning off this screen here and there is the image and you'll see that looks a lot sharper. And if I magnify that, you should see that that's absolutely nailed on the focus. It's so much easier to trust your eye in a viewfinder in a magnified circumstance like that than it is to trust the autofocus. But no matter how good autofocus is, you're never absolutely positive whether it's focused just a millimeter or two either side of where you expect. Whereas if you actually eyeball it through the, the, the viewfinder or through the live view on here, you can see precisely where your focus point sits. And that's really important in studio work because for close-ups, for instance, you don't have much depth of field. Now, I said before I'm shooting this at f4. That's because I want the flash to recycle quickly for the demonstration. Normally, I would probably shoot this at f11, but even so, that's never going to be enough depth of field because the camera is about six inches deep. At, at end, there's no aperture I can use which will give me that depth of field at this distance. So I'll show you a, a way, well, refer to a way around that in a sec. That is pretty much it. Um, once the camera is connected, you simply click the button and you get a shot. And it pops up on the right hand side of the screen in Capture One Pro um, within a second or two. And that's pretty much done. A couple of things though. First of all, if I wanted to get this uh, antique camera perfectly sharp all the way through, what I can do is to focus stack it. Now, I'm not going to show you the focus stacking after we've actually shot the images. I'll just show you how to shoot the images. But if I magnify the shot in live view, there's live view, and you'll see that that is focused on the lens. If I just, there we go. What I can do is shoot a picture at that setting. Then I can move my focus point back a little bit. So it's about an inch behind there, that'll do about there. I can then shoot that. Then the same thing again. And it, it's useful to get used to which direction to turn the ring. I'm turning it anti-clockwise and it's moving the focus point away from me. And I'm just going to keep my fingers on it, shoot one more, then move it again to magnify and move it back. Now you can't move the view around in the, the actual screen, but you can move the view around using the joystick on the back of the camera. If the camera's in manual focus, you can move the view around by using the joystick on the back. And once there we go, and I can move that view up a little bit to there and then move my focus point a bit further back and then shoot another frame and then move the focus right to the back, which is about there, there it goes and shoot again. So now I've got a sequence of four or five pictures where the focus point is progressively deeper into the image. And if I was shooting this at F16, for instance, I'd have enough overlap of depth of field for each shot that collectively they would add up to an image which is, uh, encompasses the whole depth of the shot. Uh, I use um, software called Helicon Focus to join them all together, but you can look that up and it's, it's really straightforward. You just export them out of here and then put them into the software and it pretty much does it automatically. It's very straightforward indeed. But that gives you some really nice control over where your focus point is. But if you want to do it all from the computer, let me just show you one other step. So we're in Capture One Pro. I'm gonna turn off the live view in Capture One Pro. The camera is still connected. 
I'm going to bring up Leica's own uh, software utility called Image Shuttle 3. You can download that for free from the website and install that. And the cool thing is you can have it running in parallel with Capture One Pro. That means that I can use either Capture One Pro or Image Shuttle to control the camera, but at the same time, I don't need to use one or the other and turn one off. They actually both work and control the camera. It's very cool. So I'm just going to bring up Image Shuttle and it looks very similar. And this is the live view photo and this is the camera controls and this is sitting on top of Capture One Pro. So just to prove the point that if I take a picture now, there's a big button. If you see a big round button in this software, that's what you click to take the picture. So I'll shoot it now and there's my shot. The really cool thing here is that I can use autofocus if I want to. Now you do have to go into your camera settings, which is there's two tabs in the software here and change it from manual focus to auto focus single shot. Now you could do it on the camera, but we might as well do it here because that's one of the benefits of using tethering. Go to AFS and whatever I click on in the image, I'm just going to click on the viewfinder. It will refocus on that now on the lens and it will refocus on that. So that's really neat. So you could do your focus stacking by clicking the first one and then clicking maybe about there, shooting again, then about there, shooting again, then about there, shooting again, and so on. And you're gradually building up that sequence of images um, for your focus stacking. If you want to override the autofocus, you can go back to manual focus. And then when you move the focus ring on the actual camera, it will magnify and you can see the results. So both of those bits of software, Image Shuttle 3 and Capture One Pro, can both be running at the same time. And no matter which button you shoot with, the image will end up in Capture One Pro. And you'll see if I get rid of Image Shuttle back to Capture One, you'll see those images that I shot are in down the side here as well. So it actually works so neatly, but I suspect that within the next month or two or three, Capture One Pro will offer that same autofocus or manual focus option that you get in Image Shuttle now. So for the moment, Image Shuttle 3 is a bit of a workaround. Uh, hopefully it'll be integrated into Capture One Pro in the near future. So really, there's not a lot more to it than that. Um, plug the camera in, it pops up on the screen, shoot the picture and it very quickly comes into your session in Capture One Pro. I should mention one thing. I did talk about the, the cable. You can't just use any old USB-C cable. A lot of USB-C cables are meant for charging for small cameras and phones and things. You need a proper USB-C data cable, which is shielded and with really good construction. The Tether Tools ones are the ones I use, but you, as long as it's a proper strong data cable, it should work fine. The theoretical limit of the cable length is three meters. Uh, this is a four and a half meter one and it works fine, but apparently the reliability and the stability of the connection drops off after three meters. So if you're shooting handheld, which of course you can do, you can take this camera off and shoot handheld, no problem at all. But if you're doing that and, and working really hard, you may find uh, that the data transmission gets a little unstable and you may find that you miss a few frames or it drops out completely. So three meters is the guaranteed maximum. Four and a half meters seems to work fine. I mean, I haven't had any problems with my four and a half meter cable, but that's just what the specifications say. So I'm just sharing that with you. So yeah, that's it for tethering. Um, you probably have all the tools that you need. You can download a copy of Capture One Pro to uh, play with. I think you get a 30 day fully functional trial. Um, see if it works for you. I find in a studio it's extremely effective because I can, I can tinker around on my tabletop here and then simply lean over and hit the button here or hit the button there, whichever's nearest, but the images get copied into my laptop straight away. I don't have to take the card out later and, and um, you know, download them onto anything else and you can check the, the images as they come in. So it's a really neat little way of working. So have fun with that.